What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie the Dream Poet here. Coming to you all from the outskirts of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And today you guys, I have something very cool to show you guys. Actually the echo gives it away. And that is this big bunker right here. Now you all are, are probably wondering, how is a bunker out in the middle of nowhere with almost seemingly no purpose you got to think it's out in the middle of the woods it's covered by lush foliage and a road that seemingly goes nowhere which that's where my car is but you guys the reason for this bunker and the series of other bunkers that are in this location well we must dwell <laughs> delve about 80 years in order to explain this story. It is the 30s and the 40s. You have what is perhaps one of the worst wars to happen since World War I. And that would be World War II. America has gotten involved because of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. So what the government does is they have to ramp up production of their explosives, their dynamite, their what I like to call boom booms. And uh, the best way that they can do this is by buying up land and essentially contracting out civilian companies to build these explosives. One of these ammunition sites is in Chattanooga and this entire area is covered with these bunkers. Now the reason why they are built like this is mainly because there was a lot of dynamite stored in this and just on the off chance that these magazines went off and exploded, well, the door would burp right there and on the top, it would spew a big giant explosion that would send everything sky high but keep everyone else from getting hurt by the way we are now at the top of this magazine and what is left doesn't really look like a whole lot is left behind and it's it's covered up so today you guys we are going to explore this old ammunition plant which has now become a nature park it was uh, made a nature park back in december of 2010 and since then it's used for a lot of mountain biking a lot of camping a lot of fun outdoorsy stuff so the land is being reclaimed but still this is the story of this ammunition site. So let's do this. Anchor down. So for starters, let's go in number one. Yes, this is number one. I would probably say that there, uh, there's about 50 or more of these bunkers in this area. By the way, you can drive around, so we will explore the ones that we can go in or those that are closed off and by the way you guys this is something that i wanted to show you guys i'm not raising my voice but yet the echo is so strong in here it's it's very crazy I almost feel like I'm about to see Mothman. And just in case, if y'all are curious about how much dynamite this bunker could handle, well, here is the old, uh, the all old marker from here, uh, from that time period. It could handle about uh, 250,000 pounds of class 1.1 1 .1 or 500,000 pounds of class 1.3. Personal limits, technicians eight, casuals three.
I guess they don't want cars coming through here. Or at least that's my guess anyway. Um, it does look like there is a bit of a, a trail, or at least what was once a trail. I think it is still a trail. But we are here at bunker number two. And bunker number two, you all can tell, is shut off to the public. There are a few more that are uh, that are open. One of them is a historical marker or a historical uh, site, I guess you could say. But uh, as of right now, this is the kind of door that you would see that can handle up to about 250,000 pounds of TNT if it were to ever go off. And here is a, an older one. Again, what we saw at the first bunker. Just kind of showing how much explosives this, uh, this particular bunker could handle. So I like to think that it by chance or accident that one of these things were to go off, those doors can handle that much force. Just think about that. That was back in the 30s and the 40s. Hmm. Well, I guess the more you know. One of the things that I have noticed so far is that this nature preserve is huge. Um, for better reference, to give you all an idea on how big this ammunition facility was, is at one point, it was over 2,500 acres. And not only did uh, this ammunition site produce uh, dynamite, and other explosives for uh, World War II. It also produced dynamite and other explosives up until the 90s. So, it, well actually even at one point, it was the biggest uh, producer of, uh, of explosives for the Vietnam War. So all the explosives that uh, came from this particular area, all this, more than likely supplied um, the war effort during uh, Vietnam and uh, the Korean conflict. And as I was walking, um, this is one of the main historical spots that you can walk into, bunker number 28. As you can see, you've got a lot of these old school doors right here, pretty much what we've seen. And as I've driven, I've seen quite a few of these which are closed which I can understand because uh, you don't want people getting in these and, and getting hurt. And with the... <coughs> As I was saying, with the acoustics, I'm gonna try something here real quick. Now obviously you cannot do that normally. Yes, the acoustics in these old abandoned uh, dynamite bunkers are absolutely fascinating. And who would have thought they used to use dynamite for those things. And before we go on to the next place, let's walk around this bunker real quick. Just uh, 
another size comparison to how big these things were constructed and how much explosives they could handle. Just to think, these are out here, quite frankly, in what is the middle of nowhere now, or maybe not so much, it's close to Udawal. Now, not far down from the road from uh, 28, the historical marker display, here is uh, number 27. Now, they all about look the same, but this one, strangely enough, it is closed, but they have done it this way. Don't know what I have to think about that. That is very, very interesting. Now, from what I understand, there are more than just bunkers here at the park. Um, I, I think it's gated off, but uh, around here in this near area or this nearby area, there is a actual, uh, a the actual ammunition plant itself. And from what I understand, it is very much uh, contaminated. There's still a lot of chemicals and other harmful uh, other harmful things that go that are in those old buildings i believe that's why they they keep it closed off to the public but while we're out here we're gonna try to uh at least get close to them not go inside because i have heard that there are they are out here and i do want to see them so i guess let's keep on driving i wonder if it's up this way i don't know um I've seen a few pictures and a few videos of people that have gone uh, either near these buildings or uh, or around them. I know that they're gated, but you can never be too sure. I mean, I find it kind of strange that this uh, this road just kind of tapers off into nowhere. Oh, excuse me. Like the pile of rocks, the really really old school. Uh, concrete or maybe it just leads to another bunker i mean this number well this one number 25 is kind of just hidden in the middle of nowhere um although the historical marker or not the historical marker but the uh limit marker looks like it's probably the best uh in the best condition that i've seen so far um personnel limits 19 but still, there's a little bit of room past this pile of rock. We will see. Maybe, just maybe, or maybe it just overlooks the hill. Looks like it might just overlook the hill. Yeah, that's... That's what I'm, I'm thinking, anyway. Look, there's also a, another pile of of uh, asphalt you know what kind of curious to see what's behind this gate right here because right across the fence is an old school road so i'm kind of curious to see what's beyond this point I believe it's a, a hiking or walking trail. So let, let, let's see what leads to this old abandoned road. Maybe maybe we'll find that plant. I mean, it's obvious this road hasn't seen better days. You know what? Probably the last time something was on it. Huh, train off in the distance. Was probably back in the 90s. That's when uh, this plant shut down. So I don't really think, but you never know. I see a big giant building in the background, but I think that might actually be Volkswagen. Yeah, I don't think there's anything on the other end of, uh, of all this. Other than uh, that right there, that is behind the uh, the Volkswagen plant. So this is not what we are looking for. So anyway, you guys, I think this is going to be another vlog for another day. Uh, this place has been on my list for a while now. I've always wanted to see it. 
And today, this was cool. I'm glad that uh, I came out here and I saw some of the remnants from a bygone era in nature is, that is finally taking over. But uh, anyway, you guys, remember, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Always means a lot. Goes to show that y'all care. That y'all want to see more awesome videos. So without further ado, you guys, vlog over.